Hello there. Um, I'm out, actually out and about today. Uh, I'm heading across to Cumbria for a camera club talk tonight. So on the way, I thought it's been a few years, so I'm going to come uh, come down and shoot Sycamore Gap on the Roman Wall. I think it was 2014 the last time I was here. So we're going to give that a go. Shoot some ICM. And see what comes of it. Hopefully you can hear us okay, it is a bit bloody blowy, um, but as behind us you can see that's the uh, is it the wind ridge that runs the, pretty much the length of this section of the Roman wall. Uh, and the, the usual way is to follow it up and over the top, right up the, 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 you know, the steep climbs and then the drops and in as the, as the hills roll like so. But my legs are in no fit state to ta tackle that, so I'm going along the bottom way, much more civilised. Yeah, much more civilised along this bottom path, much less strenuous. I won't be sweating like pig and out of breath by the time I get to the tree, so this is by far the best route. So while we're on route, I can I can explain what my thoughts for today are on. Oh, hold on, I've got to get past this puddle. Right, we're past the puddle. That's 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 sorted. So um, yeah, today I'm on my way across the Cumbria. We're Lazen Lazenby. Camera club talk. I had intended on going further on and into the lakes for the day. You know, it was just early. It was about half eleven by the time I got myself organised to come home, to set off from home. I thought I'd better just call in and do something on the way over. So, like I said, I haven't been here since 2014, where I was on my way back from the lakes, and I actually shot it with the, the Fuji XT1, and not my normal system. Uh, so I would like to see what I can do with this scene at this time of year, in this light, just to see how things go. Like I say, it's, I think it's about one, one o'clock, it's middle of February. The sun's in and out of clouds. So it's, uh, it's a bit, light-wise it's quite patchy, but it's probably dull enough to be able to, to do this during the middle of the day. A little bit of light will certainly help as well. So hopefully it's going to be... I'm gonna, once I get along there there's going to be some light for us to play with. Just enough to to light the tree up. Obviously with it being February the, the tree still will still be stripped bare. You know, it'll be another couple of months before the, the life of spring comes back to it and it greens up. So it's really just to see what I can get on a day like this and maybe come back when spring has sprung and shoot it again a bit more seriously and maybe it's in better light. So one word is an upwards. Yeah, so I just did a little time lapse there. So whilst I was doing that, I was giving the camera a bit of a wiggle. And I think recently that I've been out that much in good light that I've uh, on a day like today, where I used to love a day like this for shooting in because it was dull, nothing was blown out. You could you could work the camera longer because of the darker shadows. I've got that used to having good light for the few times I have been out. I'm kind of struggling 
uh, whether it's because I've shot this before and there's only so many so many ways you can do it I don't know but it's uh, it's making it tricky and vlogging when there's people walking past makes it very tricky as well they do, they do give you some funnier looks love this landscape beautiful you know, the big high ridges just wish I could do them justice using this technique so better shoot some more anyway just to be sure Now that one's pretty good for really just following the outline of the, the hill to the that side. Which is just out of frame. I shall move you across. That hill there. Lovely slope. So uh, when I've been shooting that, basically just been following the contour of it. And it's producing some nice shape. One downside of it though, the tree is to the far right of the frame, not very good. So it's going to be one of them ones I'm going to have to play with in post. Not that I don't do that anyway, but it's going to take a bit more structure in the image to bring the tree back into a prominent position. Wilder movements, I'm really going for a washed out kind of look. So there's, uh, you know, there's very little shadow to play with. So it's pretty much just a washed out image. Right then, now that the, the yeah, tourists have got out of the way. I can talk to you a bit better. Uh, another technique I use a lot is just almost turning the, the camera on the axis of the subject. So basically I'm, I'm roughly aiming centre of, of the frame as the tree and then it's easy just to turn the camera on its axis, axis. and that'll help the paint, paint, let the sky paint out the foreground thus lightening the image. So I'm going to do some of that now. The more you do it, obviously you're looking at the back of the camera all the time. So you, you've just seen what works on the last shot. If you like it, repeat it. If you don't like it, change it. Change your movement slightly, maybe just add in a bit of lateral movement to finish as well. Um, but obviously you start putting the shutter on the, sub on the subject, give it a spin, and then just you know, just gently paint from there. Looking not too bad. Uh, another thing I did there, I realised that as I was spinning, especially the, spinning the camera that way, it's harder to spin on its axis. But I had to aim lower in the in the landscape, so the central point actually used the, the ground rather than the sky just above the tree. So it's it's all small adjustments and small adjustments to movement that can uh, really give you be the change between bad data and good data. Just as say in that brief few seconds where I turn the camera off, I got some bloody good data from flinging the camera around even wilder. So hopefully I'll show you that now. Well, I'm now underneath said tree, uh, Sycamore Gap, Robin Hood's tree, whatever you want to call it. Come back here, camera. <laughs> She's blowing a gale. Um, 
fancy going up um, onto the top of there, but I think we'll just not bother. It's, getting, it's very bluey, the skies are darkening over that way. There's rain on the way, there's a bit of moisture in the air anyway. Jesus Christ, this camera's going to blow away. It's almost flat on the bloody wall. Right then, um, I kind of very much quickly aborted that video and didn't record anything on the way back because it peed it down. Um, so I'm back in the car, a bit wet, having my dinner at about three in the afternoon. So it too is always the way. These things don't come straight away. They come after quite a bit of work. So the images I made when I first got along there, terrible. But it's always the last few that I managed to get some good good captures with. And it was a very much a case of it was the ones where I was turn, really turning it, turning the camera upside down with a lot of movement. <coughs> I can see on the back in, on the back of the camera there's some lovely shapes. The trees are apparent, the mounds, you know, the hills are the the rolling hills are apparent as well. So all the elements are there. And now we're just a case of processing them, see what we get. So that's the next step. And if they're any good, they'll follow this video. So before they rule, if there's more than one, there might just be the one. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please do like, share, subscribe and all that bobbins. Um, your support is very much appreciated. And do remember I've got my live streams on Tuesday nights. Do tune in for them. Uh, always welcome and I'll be editing these type of images. I may well be editing or have edited one of these images from today in a, in a past live stream by the time I've edited this. So if you're interested, check those out. So thanks again for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. See you.